175 years ago, a community of Christians called a pastor and covenanted to love God and to love their neighbors. 275 years ago, the community of the First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, Bristol, Connecticut, was formed. Moving forward in faith, we continue to be a community that welcomes all, nurtures all, and changes the world with Christ's love. In God's spirit of unconditional love, I welcome you to worship with the First Congregational Church in Bristol, Connecticut, an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ on this Communion Sunday. My name is Reverend Kristen Kleiman. Please call me Kristen. Whether you are a longtime attender or this is your first service, whether you are worshiping live or later, whether you are in the sanctuary or online, you belong to God and you belong to this Christian community. For those who are worshiping online, I look forward to interacting with you through the comment section on Facebook. If you have a Facebook account, I hope you'll give a thumbs up to the post or to my welcome post. If you do not have a Facebook account, I hope you'll respond to the Worship Rewind email that I will send tomorrow. Um, you may share prayers in the comments section right now or contact me throughout the week. For those who are in the sanctuary, there are options for communion. In addition to water and saltines, there are also heart-shaped cookies. And so thank you to Ellen for that delicious treat for communion. Next month, the worship team is working towards adding grape juice in a way that feels um, safe. So communion supplies are located by both entrances where there's also an offering plate for your financial gifts. Just want to share about these beautiful flowers that are given in memory of a beautiful woman uh, on what would have been her birthday last week. Um, so we give thanks for Betty Hinman and for her faithfulness to God and her family and to the First Congregational Church. And um, we have a, a change that we're doing to flowers. Um, so before we ordered them from a florist and now they are going to charge us $12 to drive it up the hill. So, uh, so we invite you, if you would like to share flowers for worship, um, you could order through uh, our florist or you could bring in flowers of your own. So if you would just coordinate with Pat in the church office, uh, we would love to do that because it's always beautiful, right, to have flowers in worship. And, um, and for those of you who are in line, you can't smell how beautiful the lilies are. I really like lilies. Youth choir for grades 2 through 8 will be in the sanctuary today at 1115. And kids club will meet next Sunday during worship. Pack 6 for kindergarten through 5th grade is Thursday at 630. And last week they built birdhouses and other fun things. And this week, uh, the pack is moving on to Pinewood Derby cars. And Troop 6 for 6th through 12th grade is also Thursday at 7 o'clock. And coming up this week is game night on Friday night, February 10th from 6 to 8. For dinner, there will be chili and hot dogs. And if you wish, you could make that a chili hot dog, if that is your preference. So, so after dinner, we will gather into small groups to play different board and card games. So I invite you now to join me in a time of centering, a time to connect with God and feel God's presence. I invite you to take three deep, slow breaths, breathing in God's love, breathing in God's peace, breathing in God's joy.
please join me in our call to worship. In this moment of worship and every moment of our lives, make your love, make your wisdom, make your presence known to us, O oh God. scripture passage comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verses 22 through 29. This, the he is Jacob. That same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was pulled out, put out of joint as he wrestled with him. 
Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said to him, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. I want to remind my young friends that next week after the Time for Children, there will be Kids Club, and so, uh, so we will do Time for Children, and then you'll be able to go and do some fun activities. And um, if you all hadn't figured it out, a week from Tuesday is, oh, really? Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day. And um, this is such a wonderful thing. The Bristol Parks and Rec, they are collecting Valentines to remind people in our community that they are loved. So I want to say to my young friends and to my more mature friends, as you are making and buying Valentines for family and friends, I hope that you'll also make one for somebody that you don't know. That this will be a way that you'll share Christ's light and love with all the world. Because it doesn't matter if it's through the church or through partner ministries like Par Bristol Parks and Rec. Loving our neighbors is how we faithfully follow Jesus and love God. So, so I hope 
by Friday they want to collect all of these valentines. So I hope maybe you'll go home and you'll make a valentine and you'll drop it off. You can drop it off either at um, High Street or at the Aquatic Center, or if you bring it to church, I will drop it off for you. So, um, so I invite you to share the peace and love of Jesus Christ with one another. It felt like he had been wrestling from the moment he was born. Actually, he had been wrestling from before he was born, since he wrestled in the womb with his twin brother Esau, struggling to be the firstborn. Wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. And that wrestling continued throughout the years with Jacob struggling to get his brother's birthright and inheritance as well as their father's blessing. Jacob was so used to wrestling that he didn't even question it. He didn't ask if he should have what he was struggling for. He didn't consider whether his methods for obtaining it were fair or right. He just wrestled, living up in all ways to his name Jacob, which in Hebrew means trickster. Jacob tricked his twin brother Esau. Jacob tricked their father Isaac. He tricked his father-in-law, Laban, 
and was very unhappy to find himself tricked in return. It didn't turn Jacob from his trickster ways, though. He continued to struggle and trick and wrestle to get what he thought he deserved. Until one day, when he realized that all of his struggling, tricking, and wrestling was making his in-laws quite hostile to him, and he began to become afraid of what might happen. And it just so happens at that same time, God spoke to Jacob and told him to return home to the land of his ancestors. I will be with you, God promised him. So Jacob decided to flee, to sneak away as fast and quietly as a man with two wives, two maids, 11 children, and the accompanying servants and livestock can go. Can you imagine, like, this doesn't really like, feel like flea. But Jacob began his journey home. Home to the brother that he had tricked. Home to the brother that he had struggled with since before they were born. Home to the brother who was pretty angry the last time Jacob had seen him. Even though Jacob was a trickster, he didn't deceive himself into thinking that his brother Esau was going to open his arms in forgiveness and embrace him in love. So Jacob sent an apology ahead of him. And the messengers returned with their own message. Esau was coming to meet Jacob with 400 men. It didn't sound like a welcome party. So as is very human to do, Jacob went into full-blown panic mode. He split his family, his servants, his livestock into two groups so that at least one of them would survive an attack. He sent a bribe to his brother. And then Jacob did what a lot of us do in a time of crisis. He prayed. He wrestled with God in prayer. Oh, Lord, you told me to go home. You told me you would bless me if I went home. Have you ever wrestled with God like this? You promised me a future of hope, and this isn't it. How can it be good to watch my loved one be ill, suffer, die? How can the way that I am feeling, afraid, lonely, angry, depressed, be your will? And even as Jacob expressed all of those very human emotions and feelings to God, Jacob also remembered to be thankful. Thank you, God, for your steadfast love. Thank you for your faithfulness to me, for your blessing. All that I have is because of you. And then he quickly went back to that all-familiar prayer that we pray in times of crisis. Deliver me, God. Help me, God. Protect me and my family from what I'm afraid might happen. Keep us safe from all harm. Which brings us to the Bible story we heard today. Jacob physically wrestling with a man throughout the night. Some believe that Jacob was wrestling with God. Some believe that he was wrestling with himself, with his conscience. The Apostle Paul would say that they are one and the same because the Spirit of God lives in each one of us. Made in the image of God, the Quakers believe that there is that of God in everyone. Jacob had wrestled with people throughout his entire life. This time, though, as he wrestles with God, it's not about trickery and deceit. It's not about struggling to get what he wants. This time, the wrestling was about honesty, about truthfulness. This time, the, relation, the wrestling was about relationship. Because when Jacob wrestled with God in those dark hours of the night, Jacob was honest for maybe the first time in his life. Jacob was real. Jacob didn't hide behind anything. He brought his authentic self to God, his fears, his faith, his gratitude, his love. If we really want to know God, if we really want to experience God and have God be real in our lives, we need to be real in return. We need to come to God without pretense. We can't try to hide from God or trick God. We need to say when we are angry, when we are worried, when we are disappointment, disappointed, confused, lost, and lonely. 
if we really want to know God and have God be real in our lives, we need to be honest. We need to say absolutely everything and then wrestle. Wrestle with our emotions, wrestle with how we thought things were going to be, wrestle with God's plan. Now, wrestling sounds aggressive, and it can certainly be a fight for dominance and control. And wrestling can also be playful, an opportunity to touch, connect, and be close. Wrestling with God sounds like a bad thing, like an unfaithful thing. However, when Jacob wrestles with God, Jacob comes close to God. Jacob connects with God. Jacob is blessed by God. Blessed because he was real, because he was true, because he stayed connected to God throughout it all. God doesn't want us to hide or flee. God doesn't want us to be disconnected or distant, hiding ourselves, our real feelings and struggles from God. God wants us to bring everything we are feeling, every question that comes to mind, every thought and worry to God and to wrestle. God wants us to be real. God wants us to be real so God can really be with us, so God can really bless us. Amen. I invite you now into a time of discernment, a time of two minutes of discernment. And so I invite you to just open yourselves up to God, and maybe this is an opportunity for you to be really real with God and talk to God about what is exactly upon your heart. Or maybe this is an opportunity, as we so rarely do, for you to just be still and to be in God's presence. Let us be in a time of listening. Holy God, we give you thanks for your faithful presence with us in every breath, in every moment, in every day. We pray in Christ's love. Amen. I invite you now into a time of prayer where we can share together our joys as well as our concerns. And from those who are on Facebook, I do share prayers for, help I get her name right, for Waleska, who had a miscarriage, and so we pray for the grieving that, that they are doing as, um, as they just feel this great loss, as I continue to pray for all families who are grieving, whether it be uh, miscarriages, stillborns, 
or, um, or people who would have been 90, Betsy, 98, right, 98. Also pray for Lisa, who is having surgery upcoming, and for Art, who is having a procedure this week. Are there prayers that people would like to offer? Pray for Julia. <laughs> so we give thanks for Isla Marie, who uh, was born on 2-2-23. I said either way it was going to be fun, right? Like all those twos, or she was going to wait till Friday and be 2 3 2 three. So, so we give thanks for that, and we're glad to hear that Becca is also doing well. And prayers for my mom also, and she's having her kidney removed on Friday. So we pray for Charlene, who is having surgery this week as well. They're on Facebook right now. So we are praying for you all. Uh, yeah. Pray for my grandson who's having um, actually it's minor surgery, but it's surgery on Tuesday. Okay, and his first name? Garth. For Garth who is having surgery on Tuesday. Bob has a new knee. He's home and doing well. So we give thanks that Bob's uh, knee replacement surgery went well last week, that he's home and doing well, and I bet getting worked out by physical therapists. <laughs> That's the way. No rest when you have knee replacement. Sandy. So we pray for Joe, who had another toe amputated, and we pray for his healing. And we just always keep praying that this is the end of these medical procedures and, and health. So. Sure. I was giving thanks for that on Thursday as well, that as we were heading into these uh, very frigid temperatures in New England, that the winter overflow allowed 12 more people to be inside and to stay inside. Um, I came up on Friday, in, in case 275th committee is uh, wondering, I came up on Friday to rescue the 275th banner because the wind had just like ripped it almost completely out. And as I stood here on Federal Hill in the wind, I was really glad that people get to be in the winter overflow for 24 hours a day and didn't have to go out in the cold. Well, I also want to lift up birthdays that Matt A's birthday is this Thursday. He's not even looking at me. <laughs> Are we not celebrating the birthday? <laughs> Grown up birthdays, they're not so much fun. I missed that. What? Never mind. I'll hear later. So next Saturday is Christopher C. and Caleb M. And Caleb M. is turning 17, which is really hard to hear because we think of him sometimes still as a preschooler. But, but he is um, way taller than me now. So. Chair. My son will be turning three on the 17th. So, yep. On the 17th? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm not there yet. I'm old. Because <laughs> when we start to get to the 17th, there's a lot of us. I could go day by day when we get later in the month. Let us be in a spirit of prayer. Amazing, awesome, wondrous God. We thank you for being with us through all the challenges. As we pray for those who are having surgery this week, we pray for those who are having procedures done. We pray for their health and for your Holy Spirit to be upon them. As we pray for your spirit to be upon those who had surgeries and procedures last week. Lord, we lift up to you these names we have said aloud and so many more. As we also pray for those who are grieving deeply this day. We pray that you will wrap them in your loving arms and carry them through this difficult time. We pray also, Lord, for our world. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for all those who were outside in these frigid temperatures in New England. We give you thanks for our partner ministry of St. Vincent de Paul and for the ways that they have enabled people to be able to be warm and safe inside. As we also give you thanks for the Bristol Parks and Rec that goes far beyond fun and to care of our whole community. Lord, we lift up today those who are in the midst of medical journeys and for those who are ill with COVID. 
We offer healing prayers for Katie, for Kathy D, for Dave, for Joe and Pam. As we have already mentioned, prayers for Lisa and for Charlene and Bob. Lord, we pray this day for those who are housing and food insecure, as well as those who are under and unemployed. I offer up a prayer for our veterans, our active military, our National Guard and first responders, as I pray also for our medical and teaching staffs. Be, O oh Lord, with all these people as they care for others in your holy name. And we pray for the ministry of our church, that we might help others connect with God and help them know you. Lord, we also lift up to you the blessings of our lives. We give thanks for a baby's birth. We give thanks for birthdays. We give thanks for Matt and Christopher and Caleb, as well as all the February birthdays to come. Lord, we give you thanks for so many things, for warm homes, for food and shelter, for warm hugs, and for um, connection with you and with each other. And Lord, we pray for everyone who feels like they don't have anyone to offer that to them. We pray that they might come into relationship with you and experience your blessings and presence and know Christ's love in their lives. We offer all these prayers and so many more to you. In Jesus' name, amen. conversation about money, which is really a conversation about ministry. And one of the ways that FCC Bristol uses our money is to support the ministries of the wider church, the United Church of Christ. Now, the ministry of the United Church of Christ is diverse and all-encompassing. Two of my favorite ministries, though, are the Farmington Valley Association, which provides mentoring and financial scholarships to those studying to be clergy as well as to those in our local congregations, providing the church with capable lay and ordained ministers now and into the future. And the other UCC ministry close to my heart is Silver Lake Camp and Retreat Center, where youth, many of whom have no church home, can experience God, know Christ's presence in their lives, and begin to hear how God is calling them to make our world a better place. So I thank you for your generous gifts, which support the local ministries of FCC and the global ministries of the United Church of Christ.
prayer of dedication, blessing our gifts. May your spirit of love, kindness, and compassion be upon these gifts we graciously offer to Christ's church, holy God. May your light and love shine through our words, our actions, and our offerings. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. loves you. God loves you so much that God came to earth as Jesus the Christ to show you the depth and breadth of God's unconditional love. In the spirit of Jesus, who is God's love in human form, I invite you to this table, a community for all. Will you be with me in a spirit of prayer? In this holy meal, precious Lord, help us feel your presence. Help us know your blessing. Connect us more deeply with you and with others, and transform us with your love, that we might embody your light and love in our world. Bless this cup and bread. They are so much more than a simple meal. They are your love given to each one of us. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. In the different items that we use for communion, we remember that God has created us wonderfully unique. As we join together in this communion meal, we remember that we are one united body of Christ. Following the words of blessing and consecrating the sacrament of communion, I will invite you to share the bread of life and the cup of the new covenant with me. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples in an upper room where an ordinary meal became an instrument of God. At this table, Jesus drank with those who would betray him. At this table, Jesus drank wine with the one who would deny him. At this table, Jesus gave a new commandment to love one another as God loves us. At this table, Jesus took the bread and gave thanks to God and he broke the bread, saying to his disciples, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, 
And after giving thanks to God, he gave it to his disciples and said, I invite you to drink. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for forgiveness from our failings and hope for the new life to come. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Please join me in sharing the bread of life. Please join me in sharing the cup of the new covenant. Hope for the new life to come here on earth and in heaven. Holy God, your scripture tells us to taste and see that you are good. And in this simple meal, we do taste and see that you are good, that you are a blessing in our lives. And we thank you for this simple meal that reminds us that we are forever connected to you and forever connected to our neighbors near and far. We pray in Jesus' name, giving thanks for this communion meal. Amen.
love and God loves you, may you go forth and share God's love, God's peace, God's light with all the world. Go in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Amen.